This is a really proud moment for me. Um, you have been incredible in the past nine months or so. How do you reflect on what's happened? Uh, yeah, it's not the nine months I was expecting it, uh, when I started 2017. Um, it's been a long year, but I've, there's been a lot of positives to it as well, apart from the main negative, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're, we're making progress and getting back life back on track. I heard an amazing story the other night that at Donington in that in that race in Formula Four, when you were gravely injured, you heard the guy who you hit unsighted in a lot of pain, and you told the doctors to go to him first. Yeah, that is true. Obviously, um, when I had the crash, at first the adrenaline's still running and I didn't feel any pain or anything like that. So. I could hear the guy who I hit um, screaming, so I told the doctors when they came over to me, I felt fine at the time, so I said, go over and make sure he's okay, because um, like I said, I was feeling okay, so that was the main priority for me at the time, was to make sure everyone else that was involved was okay. That kind of encapsulates what we're dealing with here, doesn't it? It's bidding all over. Yeah, it? yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, Terry, you're you are a, a, a global sensation. Your stunt driving is is legendary. You've taught him to be um, as good as you. And he nearly is, isn't he? After Billy's eyes, he's better minutes. than me already. He's only been doing it two minutes. Honestly, he's a uh, big cocky. He's been, he, honestly, he's so full of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's he really is, yeah. But it's been, yeah, it's been amazing. We, obviously, I was shocked and when it all happened as well. Left it for a while, knew Billy was starting to recover and Five years ago, I set something up with Mission Motorsport to look after injured soldiers coming back from Afghanistan and stuff that had injuries. And we literally just set up a stunt school for them to come and play with the cars. And I kind of set it all up and just left them to it. And they've been running that on their own for five years. And they've had like 300 guys go through it. And then they've moved on to other jobs. And I saw back then how they sort of come alive so I kind of always knew it was going to be good. So we invited Billy along, he come and met some of the guys, and we left them to it. And it, it's just brilliant. If you see them, they're like a bunch of old mates, and they're comparing bits. Like he's starting to get jealous now because one of them's got a sphere on the bottom, so he's got a bit of movement, so he can play golf. Billy hasn't got that yet, so it's really, uh, it's really funny watching them all just sit around and talk about stuff. If you if you if you wake up in a slightly odd mood and you think you're going to have a bad day. I mean, this is the kind of all the inspiration you need, isn't it? If you do that, just hang out with them for five minutes. Honestly, it's you just think, what am I worrying about? It's, it's pathetic, it's stupid. But, you, but the thing is as well, after spending two minutes with him, you forget about this. It's just Billy. It's just it's it's the same what it is. Yeah, it's you right. just get on with it. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, tons of plans, haven't you, to, to, to crack on in motor racing. Single-seaters, touring cars, Le Mans whatever. You're going to do something, aren't you? You're going to do it, probably do it all. Yeah, I'd like to throw my hand at everything. Um, definitely got some plans coming up for 2018. Hopefully we can get a budget together and try and gather sponsors because motorsport doesn't change for me just because I've changed myself. So it, I'm still in the, the position any other driver's in of looking for to find sponsors and stuff like that. So this is the, the downside of motorsport, I guess you could say. And then Hopefully in April this year, I'll be out in the car actually driving so I can show people what I can do. Just just one year on. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you got the prosthetics and you adapted to that very quickly because some people don't. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, just like Terry said, all the guys in Mission Motorsport, all the Army soldiers, um, they've been incredible. Um, just being around them for five minutes, uh, you just learn so much of them because in their habitat, where they're from, that there's quite a lot of people that have the same sort of injuries that I've had. But obviously, me in my day-to-day -day life, I don't meet many people who've got the same injuries as me. So it's really eye-opening and good for me to see other people that have the, those sort of injuries and what they've gone on to achieve. And yeah, it makes me really proud to be out there on the stunt display with these guys. And you must be inspired by people like Alex Zanardi. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been in contact a couple times with him since the crash, and what a character he is. Um, he's he like he showed everyone what he could do with injuries like this, and I'm hoping to just do my own, do it my my own way, and just take my my own progression, um, and hopefully, yeah, ne never know where it could take me. I'll never forget that photo of Zanardia Brands where they held the final of the of the paracycling, and he's sitting at the top of the pit lane, and he's holding his wheelchair. Sitting on the road, he's holding his wheelchair up above his head. He's the kind of inspiration that uh, that Billy can sort of take advantage of. Every everybody like that, everybody like that. Alex is great. Billy got a great Christmas present off of me this year. It was the video all about Alex, which he sat down and watched a few times actually, and it's inspired Billy to want to do other stuff. But if we just get back to the driving and the prospects, the question you asked Billy, how how quick have you? got used to them um, and this is the truth okay so when we started to do this you only tell me the truth don't you Terry yeah, I only tell you the truth I, I think the plan was let's get Billy in a car you can use hand controls throttle brake he'll be all right so that's how we started without his legs day one then he got carried away he got cocky so eventually after a couple of days two days I think we decided to maybe try the leg and just see if he could work the throttle with his leg so we got the leg on didn't we we adjusted his foot and we kind of done everything got him back in and he was doing a little bit of both and it was really coming on so then we thought it'd be quite funny to drag his mum out and Billy done a load of donuts around his mum on day two of training which was quite funny because she was screaming and he was laughing which was really fun and then we left him to it so then he kind of went up he kept meeting the guys just getting used to driving 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 last Thursday so one week one day ago was the first time he got in that Jaguar that he's doing here in the show first time to drive it V8 supercharged nearly 600 horsepower after two minutes it's like sideways everywhere with state-of-the-art hand controls throttle brake he could trail brake he could do all these things so then we kind of decided let's see how far we can push it so I took the bar off of the hand control that went to the accelerator to see if he could work the accelerator and just use the brake after 25 minutes we had all the hand controls ripped out and dumped to them and he's driving that car how you would drive the car how i would drive the car with his foot he's doing accelerator not, not how i drive it terry not like you yeah he's not that slow like those those who can do but those who can't talk about it yes yeah, yeah. but literally within a day this was last thursday he's driving that car with that leg not with that trainer because it was too big it kept getting stuck on the pedals but literally within a day he was driving how all of us drive as he told me, yeah, round of applause. That's true, and honestly, truthfully, that's... Is he telling the truth? Yeah. No, he's lying completely. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Your throttle foot is on an angle when you drive, and so you need, some, you need some ankle movement, don't you, that you don't have? He doesn't have that, so we just twisted his foot over a bit, and he's doing, doing everything with it. Yeah, it's all modulated through your hip. Your hip. Yeah, rather than, obviously, when you new, normally use a pedal, it sort of comes through your heel. So all the stuff I've been doing, the stunt driving has just been all through my hip to control the, how much throttle and brake I'm putting into the car. So uh, it's another new thing for me to get used to, but I'm not afraid of a challenge. Have you been overwhelmed? I think you've probably taken it in your stride like you do. Have you been overwhelmed by the support that you had from the motorsport industry? I mean, you know, from your fellow competitors, your good mate Jamie, right through to Lewis Hamilton, who had you at the Grand Prix and yeah, it's been, it was a bit overwhelming to be honest, I mean I had my crash, at, that, at the time I was just any normal 17 year old racing driver trying to make his way in the big world of motorsport and I woke up three days later after my crash and from a coma and to see the amount of support I'd already had in three days alone had been, was just overwhelming to say the least. Um, I didn't expect to have that kind of support. Um, and seeing the guys at Mission Motorsport, they, they, most of them, because it's happened so frequently out in Afghanistan, they don't get the credit and respect they deserve. And I was really fortunate to have it be on live TV and I have a good, strong unit of family and friends around me to support me through that time. But some of these guys don't get that opportunity. So being with them really makes you appreciate everything that, and all the support I've had so far.
your surgeons were military, weren't they? So they dealt with a lot of guys with, you know, with with uh, who needed amputation and you know major kind of trauma. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, my surgeons were all military based, and it was pure fluke that they were there on that day when I came in. Um, I don't know how well I'd be recovering now if those guys weren't there who already haven't like performed that many surgeries and the same sort of injury. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a lucky chap just to be here, and I'm just trying to make the most of life. I'd, I've gone quiet. It's horrible to be around, really. Yeah. Just want to slap him. Yeah, <laughs> idiot, go away. Um, tell me about Lewis Hamilton, oh, you know, behind the scenes, off stage, out of sort of, you know, what's he like? Because we never, we don't see that. Yeah, I feel he gets a bit of bad credit in the media, to be honest. Um, but the time I spent with him up at the British Grand Prix, he was everything, everything that I'd want my hero to be. He gave me, treated me with respect. He, he was appreciative of what I was going through, and he was just there to, to make me, let me have a good time. And for me, watching him since I've been eight years old, I couldn't have thought a better way to spend the British Grand Prix with, in better company. So, yeah, I'm ever grateful. And he still keeps in contact with me now to see how I'm getting on and see what my plans are. So, yeah, he's been amazing. And he does get a lot of stick in the media. But, no, I've nothing, nothing but good things to say about him. Oh, great stuff, yeah. Um, it shows, Terry, doesn't it, that actually most sport, it's one big family, and the kind of support he got I mean, you know, not just on the on the Just Giving page, but everything, everybody who's sort of rallied. Um, it's a it's a small community. And we all look out for each other, really. It is, and it's easier now. What the internet, TV, it doesn't matter what country you're in. Everyone knows. It's very clicky, and everyone looks out for everybody else. You're right. It's a big family. It's a great family. And yeah, we all want to look out for each other. Um, do you know what I'd really love? is you and Alex, and possibly Frederick Sose, doing Le Mans together. Who'd like to see that? Maybe when Billy's won the F1 World Championship, he might think about Le Mans. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. You have said, actually, you, you want to do single-seaters, uh, which is a whole different ball game, isn't it, for an amputee? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I was, like I say, when I was eight years old, I only I watched F1. F1 was the sport that I watched. It was that was what I saw. I looked at those guys as being the best drivers in the world. And don't get me wrong, I went to Le Mans earlier this year and I loved every minute of it. But I feel, I just feel like it's deep in the back of my mind. The dream's always been F1 since I was that that eight year old child watching it on TV, cheering on people like Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button. So, to, for me to to have the passion to keep going with single seaters is where where I think I'll thrive and be at my best. And then I'd love to have the opportunity to do Le Mans and other things like that in the future. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah, I'm speechless. You're a, you're a, you're an incredible young man. Thank you very much for coming uh, to the show. Um, we will follow your progress very closely, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Munger. Thank you. And thank you, Terry Grant. Mum and Dad, I'm bursting with pride. I don't want to put you on the spot. What a, what a, what a credit to you, actually. He's all right. Yeah. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. Brilliant. Thanks.